Spectra is firing. Orbit stabilized. This is Faraday's budget tours. I have a request from people on the ship to talk with an actual ship captain. I'd appreciate it if you have the time. But if you don't, that is really all right. You're under no obligation to respond. I'm, uh... Well, surprise you returned a hell. Can I ask the first question? I'm still talking with the captain. Cindy will organize everyone into a queue. Are you sure you're up for this? This is a really... fun crowd. So... helpful. All right. Who's up? First question. Is being a ship captain non-stop thrills and excitement like living in that movie Return of the Interceptor? Man, that sounds so glamorous. I am sure the captain is really busy and may not have time for all your questions. If you can afford your very own ship, you must be super well off. You single? Oh dear lord. My, what a catch. Last question. Let... Space is a lawless mess. If you could make the damn politicians fix one thing about it, what would it be? in the answer, Captain. Really? Oh. That's all. Everyone settle back in your seats. I cut the intercom? You have the patience of a saint. This tour group is very energetic. Here's some credits for giving them such an authentic experience. This is your captain speaking. We're about to head to our next destination. Remember, we'll be in Neon in five days, so don't spend all your money yet. Astral Lounge, here I come! Dear Lord. Crimson Fleet is not to be trusted, no matter your relationship with them. Hello, Captain. All right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comp spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jimson. 
Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. She would be wise to do the same. You're in the fleet. You should always expect trouble. As far as Juan goes, even though she's one of our newer contacts, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with her. Definitely. We're talking cargo depots, star yards, research stations, and like in SY920's case, military outposts. I've never seen someone new to the game have so many contacts. It's the reason we let her join up in the first place. I don't know how she accomplished that. We've been trying to crack some of those places for years. I sure hope so. Cause she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. Unfortunately, I have no idea. Like Neva said, it's a prototype, so it could look like anything. Once you're inside SY920 and you're behind their firewalls, you should pick through their computer system. With any luck, it'll point you the right way. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Are you kidding? The UC is already painted giant red crosshairs on our backs. Keyway and his pals at Sysdef won't rest until we're dead. It's not like you can make them any angrier at us, right? Shoot the place full of holes if you want. Just bring back that calm spike. She's got the clout to get you in the front door. They're gonna think you're part of a regular supply delivery. Beyond that, you and Juan are gonna have to put your heads together and come up with a plan. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay. So, I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh, okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here, and don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. The Crimson Fleet made contact with her about a year ago. We were searching for a smuggling connection in UC space, and her name kept popping up repeatedly, so I decided to put her to the test. Not only did she pass, but the results were off the charts. Made us both a ton of credits. That was good enough for me. Beyond that, I don't know much about her. But hey, as long as she keeps my gal bank account humming, she can keep all the secrets she wants. I'm gonna leave that up to you, Rook. If you get into deep trouble, and you think bringing her into the fold is gonna make the difference, tell her whatever you want. At some point, Delgado's gonna be promising everyone their cut of Crix's legacy. If we want him to stick with the fleet, it's inevitable. But until the money's within reach, the less people that know, the better. Hit me up if you got questions. Here to upgrade that ship of yours? Assuming the technology works? It's a skeleton key for signal encryption. 
If what they say is true, ratchet encryption, signal protocol, frequency shuffling, even quantum state keys can be hacked. Now, I doubt it does all that, but it should be enough to crack the CBR-27 transponder that Gal Bank installed on the legacy. You mean way back then? Before the tech was available to create something like the comm spike? That's a good question. I suppose he might have been able to acquire the actual transponder cipher from someone within Galbank. Unfortunately for us, I'd bet a bottle of Bog's finest that those records are buried somewhere out of our reach. See you around. Is this city meant to inspire or intimidate? Perhaps it depends on your reason for being here. Of what? This? Is it some sort of art? A Zen garden? What? It's a communal art installation. It's supposed to look nice. I guess. But I'm just saying you could have a whole bat ball field or some food stands. Something useful. It's always something with you. Thankful these rides are quick. I do not like being in small, enclosed spaces with many people I do not know. the swan anyway when the cargo became more valuable than the ship true the fleet's got us real busy these days and we are making good money smuggling all this contraband but if any time was the right time for a break hey there's still work to do i need to check with my contacts at the spaceport and find out what guards are on rotation when we leave port then it's back to the key to make sure delgado gets his cut and to make sure he hasn't cut us out I worry sometimes that being a new Atlantis, we're missing out on the big scores. I know that old dog has something big planned. I can feel it. Sheesh, that is a lot to think about. And here I thought the pirate life was carefree. Maybe for some people, but that's not how I work. Well, you feel free to plan our next moves from now to the new year. I'm all about living in the present and being where your feet are. That's fine. Just make sure to wipe those feet before boarding my ship. Always nice to see a fresh face around. I take it your neighbor's new recruit? You must not be used to pirates being so cordial. But in the heart of New Atlantis, we have to do our best to keep up appearances. I can't afford to be as rough as some of our cohorts. It's bad for business. Don't we all? Let's try not to be each other's wrenches. SY920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. Rules help establish trust, and I can't work with someone I don't trust. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, 
Once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. It's not personal. If you're caught, that entire installation will be on you. There's nothing I can do for you at that point, except send flowers to your next of kin. Look, I know I don't have a lot of history with the fleet, but I'm putting my reputation and ship on the line for this. That alone should tell you enough. Do not mistake us for amateurs. We will get the job done without sacrificing your route. I appreciate the confidence. I just want to remind you, this job calls for more discretion than your usual swashbuckling adventures. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. Only what I've been told. Get you on the SY920, get you out if I can. That being said, I can be a better guide if I know what it is we're after. So it's up to you. Fine by me. If this goes bad, the less I know, the better. And if I do get caught, there'll be nothing to confess to. Enough to be on a first-name basis with the Marines working the cops. It also helps they want us to dock. A cargo ship means supplies, special requests, slates from home. In the void of space, a cargo hauler is a soldier's best friend. I'd like to, but I need to keep a low profile. In my experience, the more people know about you, the more they have over you. Famous last words. But you do this job right, and who knows what the future holds. Anyways, I appreciate the small talk. Delgado's crew aren't usually so chatty. But let's keep our focus on the mission. We can swap bar stories and share scars when we've got enough creds to buy the bar and fix the scars. We'll talk more on the ship. something escape their notice. Nobody can stop the Crimson Fleet.
What is it? I have never been one to shy away from shouldering my share of a heavy load. Back to it then. Yes? What? Okay. All right. A few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Then try biting your tongue. Literally. We can't afford any screw-ups. If it is likely to expose us, then we should perhaps make extra effort to remain silent. <sighs> Delgado sure can pick them. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. All right, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. We'll grab jump the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship, the fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. Entered secure UC military space. Identify yourself or you will be considered hostile. This is Captain Juan Dayu, Hello. cargo class ship ID UC 7938, requesting permission to dock. Identity confirmed. Prepare your ship for scanning. You're cleared to dock in docking bay 2. Looks like we're clear. We'll talk more once we're docked. Pardon? Okay, we're in. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But, if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. Only military personnel are allowed out of the cargo area. That's why we need to get you to the barracks to find you a uniform. This is a star station, so there are plenty of ventilation ducts you can slither into. As far as tactics go, it's an oldie, but goodie. Provided you haven't sounded the alarm, then yeah, like I said, if you can find an intercom, I'll keep a channel open. I would hope not. But if they do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Howdy. Glad you're in the fleet. If you weren't, I would have killed you already.
Hello, Captain. You with the Jade Swan? Loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. Do your job, keep your head down, and we won't have trouble. We need a lot of cargo to keep a station this size running. Hold up. This area is for SY-920 military only. The contents and operations of the facility are classified. Only uniformed personnel are allowed beyond the checkpoint. Rules are rules. Can't let you in unless you're military. That's true. It's almost more of a hassle talking to you. Well, if you're quick about it, I suppose no one will notice. Yeah, I guess I can bend the rules a little. Maybe if you do it quickly. I suppose if you're quick. All right, fine. You're good. Just be quick about it. That goes for your friend, too. We will be quick. Another day, another patrol. Pardon. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. We have a full kitchen. Everything you could ever ask for on a star station. And here you are eating rations, like we're trapped in a goddamn foxhole. I just like the way it tastes. Sorry. I mean, have you tried anything else? The, the sandwiches, the salads, the cuts. Eh, not a fan. But rations you like. The, the food that's literally designed for durability rather than taste. Yup. Uh, okay. Maybe you like how they taste, but it ain't healthy to eat rations all day. No. <laughs> what, what do you mean, no? It says right here on the ration box. Equipped with all the nutritional needs for UC forces operating in adverse climates and conditions across the settled systems. So no, I don't need anything else. Rations are enough. of equipment up here. If it were up to me, the commander would have you monitor something less important, like your career. Ouch. I got feelings, you know. Hey, at least something of yours works. Now suck it up and keep your eyes open.
We've been asked to tighten security on the station. Orders are orders. Not that for a reason. Let us see what it is. Checkpoints have not been a problem so far. There is little reason to think this one would be different. I like the confidence. But remember, they tend to get harder the further you go. Hence, the clearance code. Try the security office. They likely have a computer there that has what you need. 
Going dark for now. We'll talk again once you've located your target. Not yet. Gotta get clearance at the security station and then head on over to the archives. Stenson? I don't know you, Ensign. You sure you have clearance? Stop right there, Ensign. All right, Ensign. Why aren't you at your post? Who's your commanding officer? Only authorized personnel are allowed here. Stop with the bullshit. It's not funny. Now, if you aren't authorized to be here, I ask that you leave. Stop being evasive and answer the question, Ensign. Strange. How are you allowed into the command bay if you don't know the area? Only senior officers report to the commander. Something doesn't seem right. Hmm, I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, actually, it's coming to me. Maybe we can work something out. Fine. I'll let you go, Ensign. But as soon as you're done with your task, you should return to your post. Where did you learn... Do that. I imagine it was not part of your training as a miner. to this level, Ensign, you need to leave. I don't recognize your face, Ensign. If you don't belong here, you need to get back to your post, Ensign. I won't ask again.
<clears throat> Make it quick, Ensign. I'm busy with half a dozen spreadsheets that I'm pretty sure I'd rank you. And you know how the Commander feels about breaking the chain of command. She hates it. I'm sorry, Ensign, but I don't think you have the clearance for that information. Especially when the problem concerns a leak. Are you kidding? Being a person puts you exactly at the bottom of the totem pole. Look at me. I'm an engineer, graduated top of my class, and I'm pretty sure the coffee machine gets more respect. At least the spreadsheet actually does some heavy lifting. Well, you've got a uniform, Ensign Akasaka. Just use the computer in the security office and look up the code based on your last name. I also wish to be prepared for any situation, but there are practical limits, no? Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. You're clear, Ensign Akasaka. I assume the two of you are together? Yes, we are t together. Then you're both clear.
Katara. Test flights for the latest prototypes are ready to go. Acknowledge, Lieutenant. Inform them they are clear to launch. Get back to your boast, Ensign. I don't take kindly to loiterers on my ship. Why aren't you at your post, Ensign? Stop right there, Ensign. All right, Ensign. Why aren't you at your post? Who's your commanding officer? Only authorized personnel are allowed here. Only senior officers report to the commander. Something doesn't seem right. Hey, hey, I'm just trying to be careful here. Fine, I'll let you go, Ensign. But as soon as you're done with your task, you should return to your post. what was being protected. or some of the best in the galaxy. Recognize your face, Ensign. Are you new? If you aren't assigned to this level, Ensign, you need to leave.
Not everything in the galaxy needs to come with us, you know. Dr. Vogel has put in a request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Ah, it's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about the potential leaks? No. Until you can provide more substantial proof, we'll simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay. For now, I've recommended to Dr. Vogel to contact me immediately if he identifies any suspicious behavior. for a moment.
What's this big project you're working on? Well, I can tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Really? Couldn't you just trust me? No. Nope. Right out the airlock you go. But I try my best not to enjoy it. Doctor? I've heard the team is looking for more test pilots. Yes, if you have experience flying, you should talk to Dr. Volton. I don't know. I've flown a Discovery class, but I'm not familiar with the newer tech. Newer ships are generally easy to fly. I venture you wouldn't have too many difficulties. Now would be a good time to reprioritize what we bring with us and what we leave behind. I have things I wish to discuss with you when you have time. Things have gotten real tight since Commander Natara took over from Commander Woods. A lot of soldiers don't like it. Excuse me.
I've heard the engineers say Dr. Vogel is an AI. I guess that's their way of saying he's smart. Or boring. Accepting transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. According to autocorrelation models, results in risk increased by a magnitude of... Uh, two. But we won't tell Commander Natara. What she doesn't know won't kill her. You might wish to... lighten your load, hmm? One is less likely to survive an ambush when... To talk to you if you are able. Wait. Who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? The sign outside that says no visitors. Wait, did they not put that up? I requested it ages ago, but not surprising. Ever since Commander Natara took over, the priorities have changed. Oh, yes. I've been studying decryption of all types for quite a long time. Probably since before you took your first crab jump. Signal protocol, quantum ratchet symmetry, interleaving data extrapolation. You name it, I've lectured on it. I've probably forgotten half of it. 
But I definitely knew it once. Don't you mean access to the ship? Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types. But the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Well, yes. In the same way the Almagest is a book on constellations and a supernova is an explosion in space. The greatest scientific minds the UC has to offer did not congregate to this station to build just a module. The brightest engineers in the settled systems did not get transferred to this station to build just a module. I suppose a module does have certain tactical advantages. Exactly. It's convenient, covert, and, well, costly. But we have the funding. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts, and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters. <laughs> Particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. Steal the calm spike? Why? Who is this person? Damn space pirates! Say no more! I will contact Commander Natara immediately. Commander Natara! This is Dr. Vogel. What is it now, Doctor? We have an intruder on board. Captain Juan Dayu is not who she says. Wait, Dayu? Captain's on Messina's list. Apparently, she's with the Crimson Fleet. And she's after my comm spike. Don't worry, Doctor. We'll sound the alarm and have a strike team directed toward the cargo bay. Good. I have a pilot here. I'll have them secure the prototype and make sure it's safe. You are a pilot, aren't you? You've got the look, at least. Take this key card. It'll give you access to docking bay 8. I need you to make sure my prototype is safe. Upstairs, I'd love to shoot me some pirates. Doctor, Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes. What? The Marines on this station are some of the best in the galaxy. Every project has a team leader. Dr. Vogel's in charge of the contract. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. Head on in. That's a real nice we'll ship you brought in. I can't wait to tinker with it. Look. That's a real nice ship you brought in. I can't wait to tinker with it. Your previous ship's being brought back to the dock. 
I always thought he leeches were just pests. Never considered trying to raise one as a pet. Imagine having your own Terramoth. Surprised to see me, Rhett? Delgado may let it slide, but I don't take kindly to snitches. Here? Yeah? Tell that to my bank account. You screwed me out of the most lucrative route I have. It's going to take me months to set up something even remotely as good. Not to mention getting the UC off of my trail. Don't put this on me. I got you in and gave you cover. You decided to return that favor by blowing mine. You may have fooled Delgado and Neva, but I don't trust you, Rook. At this point, you better find that legacy. Because to me, that's the only saving grace you've got. As long as you put the fleet first, we won't have any problems. I hope you're not wasting time on small talk when there are jobs to run. Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us to Comspike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Don't worry your pretty little head about your damn ship. We had it brought back here safe and sound. Now pay attention. Dale went out of his way to tell you how impressed he was. You just gonna leave him hanging like that? Should have taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She's actually pretty pissed, in case you didn't notice. Claims you blew a cover. If Juan doesn't like how things have gone, and she wants to bail out her share, that's her problem. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Com spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jennerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. It's the giant shroud that covers the entire city, big ugly thing that Jennerdyne uses to absorb lightning strikes. When you arrive in Neon, I'm sure your contact will fill you in with all the boring details. It's all we got. Now you are part of this job, so deal with it. Besides, I've learned never to question Jasmine's talent. Hey, my girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it, so cut the crap. The only thing you need to worry about is bringing the tech home. All right, all right. Infighting isn't going to get us to the legacy any faster, Neva. Now, why don't you give us the info on our Neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of Neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward, we all split the cash. Don't worry. When Crixus' legacy is aboard the key, we'll be splitting plenty of cash. Until then, I want you to do everything Estelle asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. 
She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. We have dealt with more than a few of your captains. This one should be no problem. It's the way you dealt with the last captain that concerns me. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy. And we cannot afford any screw-ups. Oh, hello. Fleet first. Never forget it. It's right in front of us. We have the conspike, and we know where the beacon is. All the hunting, sleuthing, and guesswork is over. We just need the tools to reach out and grab it. I haven't had time to gauge it, but word of what happened on SY920 has already been spreading around the key. There have been skeptics among us, but there is no room for doubt now. Either you're on board, or out of the fleet. We'll have them. You want to hook up with the Stale Vincent and Neon. She considers herself the first lady of Neon. Lots of connections in that city. Holds court at a bar called Madame Savage's Place. Luckily for us, she's also a Crimson Fleet captain. And the reason why we have permission to ply our trade in Neon. Estelle can get a little wild and has a bit of a mouth, but she gets the job done. Just follow her instructions and you'll do fine. Yeah, don't let the corruption that runs through the city entice you into doing anything stupid. There are too many opportunities for people like us that are just waiting to drag you down. Niana's full of all sorts of distractions, bars, gangs, and most of all, Aurora. Stay away from that stuff. Get in, get out, and bring that conduction grid tech back to the key. Good luck. of soldiers smuggling personal items into the station. Everything looks clear. UC Marines are way too disciplined. It's tough not seeing any action, but securing a station like this is a pretty important duty. You have permission to speak freely. It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. Betraying Juan Dayu for cover was a dangerous gambit, but it seems to have paid off. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. Lieutenant Toft can explain. We have operatives watching the Crimson Fleet's known contacts at all times. In this case, they observed you making contact with Juan. They continued to shadow your progress until you made your departure from New Atlantis on the Jade Swan. 
And, if I may, I'd like to echo the Commando's sentiment. I have some comrades on SY920, and I appreciate the restraint you showed by sparing their lives. As you probably guessed, not very well. Keeping Mast out of the loop regarding this particular mission has proven exceptionally difficult. But we've managed to keep your involvement in the dark. Sparing the lives of the soldiers on SY920 has definitely made our position with the top brass much easier. Honor, loyalty, and valor are exactly the attributes we admire in a sysdev operative. Requiring honor of the operatives you have conscripted into service is a curious thing. But of course, we will act with honor. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. That all depends on what you brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing. But at the moment, I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. With the acquisition of the comm spike, the fleet is one step closer to Crix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here. So let's start by discussing the status of the comm spike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. Your ship will need special protection to ensure the electromagnetic disturbances in the planet's atmosphere don't fry your circuits. The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer. Like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. The fact that our common enemy owes its existence to the United Colonies, of course. It was the riot at the lock touched off by Jasper Creeks that inspired him to create the Crimson Fleet in the first place. Thanks to your assistance, we'll be able to rectify that mistake, and Mast will authorize an all-out assault. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. If you are free soon, the commander appreciates the sacrifice you've made going undercover. It's good to have you back. What can I do for you? Hmm, glad to hear it. Let's see what you got. Finally. We've been tracking the Jade Swan for almost a year, but Captain Dayu somehow remained one step ahead. Every time we've scanned that ship, it's come up empty. Well, she's not going to skate away this time. Nice work. Have any more? Cost overruns, siphoning project funds? How deep does this well go? Our forensic accounting team is going to have their hands full. I'll send this to Mass right away. Let's just hope that a few rotten apples within the UC haven't spoiled the entire bunch. Any other fragments? All right. Keep up the good work. Let me know if you need anything else. Go back. Anything to report? Do you have anything to report? Dismissed. 
It's tough not seeing any action, but securing a station like this is a pretty important. sent you up there for some more pirate work. Even more impressive, you managed to do it without taking any lives. Maybe I misjudged you. That's more than I can say for myself, given the history of Project Archangel. We were testing prototype fighter ships, experimental engines, weaponry, the works. The four of us were the best of the best. Emphasis on the were. I was one of four pilots recruited for the program. My codename was Azrael. At the time, I embraced the name, the Angel of Death hunting Crimson Fleet pirates in a prototype ship. But even for an angel, pride always comes before the fall. The official word as I was transferred back to SysDef because the need was great. The reality is I was kicked off the unit. I was so bored on that station, I spent all my time in the barracks drinking cases of smuggled booze. When the time came for my test flight, I was so wasted, one of the others had to cover for me. The engine caught fire right after takeoff. Pilot, crew, gone in a flash. Is that right? I guess that lets me off the hook with the jailers, but not with the judge upstairs. I appreciate what you're trying to do, though. Just give me some time to process it. I've heard the technology in this station would make the FC surrender before we even started another war. Sir, if I may speak freely, is there a reason for the harsh reprimand? As far as I know, I just tracked a little mud into the brig. Soldier, have you ever heard of Trenchfoot? Can't say that I have, sir. Well, they say guards on Suvorov would sometimes trudge through cold, frost-wet trenches on their daily patrols. Prolonged wetness led to circulation and nerve damage, a.k.a. Trenchfoot. Unable to perform, those guards were taken off duty, and security suffered, all because they didn't take the time to properly dry their feet. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? I do, but if I may, I would argue that we're not on some frozen planet, sir. But you tracked in mud from your last mission. You brought in any number of microbial life forms, known and unknown, into my brig. These are direct threats to the health and safety of this crew, and by extension, the security of this brig. On my brig, cleanliness is a duty, and I suggest you take this duty seriously. And if not, I will have the commander relieve you of it. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Things were a little too loose under Commander Woods. With Commander Natara, we have stricter checkpoints, more patrols, and better security. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I swear, this is all just a big misunderstanding. Oh, well, I just figured we got along so well back there in Sidonia. You might remember everything that I did for you and return the favor. I know you were just doing your job, so I'm not going to hold that against you. I could really use the help. I shouldn't have to plead my case. I wasn't committing a crime. Do you have any idea how tough it is to earn your way in Sidonia? Either you spend all day in the mines getting your lungs filled with Martian dust, or wear your fingers to the bone working on machinery. All I was trying to do was earn a living. Display a little bit of, uh, entrepreneurial spirit. 
If trying to make a living is considered breaking the law, then lock me up and throw away the key. Well, yes. But that's only because they forced me into their ranks. You've met Naiva. You know how she is. She, uh, threatened to kill me if I didn't do what she said. Come on. You've got to put in a good word for me. So, that's how it is. All right, fine. I'll tell you this, though. The UC can't hold me forever. And when I get out, first thing I'm going to do is hunt you down. Right at the broken spear in front of everyone. And the reputation I may have had there is long gone thanks to that little stunt. On top of that, they caught me right in the middle of a... deal. I was closing with some long haulers. I guess I can kiss that money goodbye. That drunken miner? No. Whatever you said to him must have sunk in because I haven't seen him since you left Sidonia. He's lucky. If he would have stumbled into this spear begging for credits again, I would have... Well, use your imagination. You're just saying that to take a shot at the FC. Are you serious? You actually expect me to be grateful? I don't know Sistef's endgame, but I'd wager that you've bitten off far more than you can chew. No matter what you throw at the fleet, Delgado will find a way out. Interrogation complete? Good. Maybe I can get some rest. This entire operation has been extremely stressful. And I'm not even... I doubt the pirates have taken a break, though. I guess they've got the legacy to motivate them. What do we have? A galaxy free of pirates with motivation enough. Salutations. I assume you're here to commemorate my terrible misfortune? Ah, yes, the infamous evidence that you procured. Bravo, detective. Allow me to congratulate you on your sleuthing skills. That recording was quite a find. I must admit that I was short-sighted when it came to Ms. Swift's ingenuity. I shall not make that same mistake twice. I had assumed you would say that very statement. How predictable. I'm almost disappointed. Well, as much as I detest being the bearer of bad news, I have to disclose that you're wasting your time. You see, this imprisonment is merely an insignificant hindrance. I don't foresee being incarcerated in perpetuity. In fact, I would wager that my legal team will have my release expedited within the month. Ah, uh, I only had the time to explain the wondrous loopholes of the UC's justice system. Do you honestly think that I'd embark on an endeavor with Miss Swist and Mr. Vera without a legal exit strategy at my disposal? I can assure you, I won't be imprisoned aboard the Vigilance for an inordinately extended period of time. Well then, allow me to reinforce your sensation of schadenfreude. Due to your actions, my tenure with Galbank has been terminated and several million credits in fines are being levied against me. The day is yours, Agent. You should be proud. Well, why shouldn't I? I was bested by your actions, therefore I should suffer the consequences. There's no need for me to dwell on the past. 
Well, enough idle banter. I've taken up more than my share of your valuable time. Honestly, this interaction has been quite pleasurable. Do feel free to stop by and gloat at any time. Good day.